I don't know. Flanged bush. Oh, everyone loves a good <laughs> flange. <laughs> but I do love tapping. Mild corrosion. Yes, quite some difference. <laughs> I think we might have fixed it. Now then YouTube, welcome to another video. A video in which we will hopefully rebuild the M3 front shockers, the BC Racing coilovers. Not a full rebuild, obviously, just the, just the top mount and the bearing, we're, we're rebuilding that today. And then once we've done that, we're gonna go for a drive. Everything's gonna be well with the world. So I'm just at BMW in Harrogate, got some new lower bolts for the suspension, some nice stuff here. But what I wanted to show you was, before we before we get on our travels, I wanted to show you this touring car they've got in here. Because I think I mentioned last time about this E36 they had here. Well, they've got an E46 now. They've got an E46 touring car, 320, six-cylinder 320. And it's got a, a real nice name on the side of it, Mr. Stuck name on the side of it. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if any of you recognise this car, but that's pretty nice, isn't it? But yeah, we're going to get on with it today. I ended up not being able to get any actual BC top mounts, so I've had to order the bearings separately. I hope they're going to work. I've got some JDM Coyo bearings. We're going to try and press them in. Um, but let's go up to the unit, get started. M3, going back together. Might even wash it, depends what the rain says. Right, I've arrived at the shed. So this is going to be a bit of a mechanical-ish, workshoppy video to start with, and then hopefully a happy ending, going for a rip in the M3. Now, I've already changed this bearing, as you can see. Got a Coyo, JD Embro, Coyo bearing in there. Um, I couldn't find these for sale as a complete unit, or I, I could find them for sale, but they weren't in stock anywhere that I could see. So what I decided to do instead was to just extract the bearing. This was the bad one. Extract the bearing, measure it up, and then I got one ordered. And I got a Coyo one, which is not only better because it's rubber sealed, but obviously JDM decent bearing, whereas this one's just shielded, got water in there. And uh, yeah, to say this was the good one, this was, just I've changed the bad one, this was the good one. This feels absolutely terrible compared to this brand new Coyo. So um, yeah, I think there should be a decent little uh, fix. Hopefully this will allow the spring to rotate nice and freely at the top. And also when we put everything back together, clean them up, hopefully the spring won't get stuck at the bottom as well. Because, you know, we're putting all our money, we're going all in on this idea that my twanging noise is the spring. When I'm transitioning hard left to right or right to left, I get a twang and I can't really say which side it's coming from, but both springs are pretty stuck. So it could just be, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping it is this, but let's, um, let's crack on, let's get started. I've also got some new bolts from BMW for the pinch bolt at the bottom of the body and I got the springs powder coated as well, so. This should all come together now and be absolutely lovely. And if it doesn't fix the noise, then I think we all know, if you've watched the previous video, we all know it's definitely well worth doing. Right, so we're gonna press this centerpiece out here. That's the first task. I've got this bearing kit. I don't think I've shown you it before. It's a, a cheap one in bearing kit terms, but it was still about 100 quid. It's got a real funny name. Yeah, maybe I have shown you it before, but Decent, real, well, I mean, for what I need, occasional use, real decent. So, been using this. Um, all I'm gonna do is, I'm using a 30 mil socket, I think. Unfortunately, none of this goes, because it's decent kit, but it doesn't go quite small enough to get to get this out. So, I'm just using a 13 mil socket. There should be one around here somewhere. Ignore the mess, this is a, a workshop. Easy. All right, so hopefully we've just pressed it out. Yep, we have. So now we need to get the bearing itself out of this. And we'll give this a little clean up before going into the new bearing. What would you call that? I've got an engineer supervising. Call it the centerpiece. Shouldered bush? A shouldered bush? I don't know. Flanged bush? Oh, everyone loves a good <laughs> flange. <laughs> what about a bush flange? Right, just pressing the bearing now out of this housing. This shouldn't take any effort at all. It came out real easy on the other side. Using a 18 mil socket this time. There we go. So that's it separated. Now we'll 
clean these bits up, just in the vise. Alright, now to press this into the bearings. It's the Coyos. I'll put the dimensions up on screen if you want to do this yourself. But yeah, I'm just going to do this in the vise, because why not? It's easy. Well, something that I've done, perhaps not ideal, and you could maybe do better, is... That sounds a bit... lumpy. And um, yeah, one thing that's kind of less than ideal is, we, we noticed, not so much on this one, but on the this one, yeah, on this bearing. Well, first of all, we noticed that the bearings are kind of loose fits in the actual cups themselves, but there's also definitely some kind of adhesive. I understand there's no focus points going on at the minute. So there's definitely been some kind of adhesive on here and there is an engineer here today despite what he's driving. He tells me that we should have got some bearing paste I think he said or just basically something to give it a bit of grab. I mean it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter because it's obviously not going to be kind of spinning, you know it's not going to be spinning at any rate or anything, it just needs to allow it to turn ever so slightly. Um, so what I'm going to do is just stick some, I can't find any super glue unfortunately, I definitely got some somewhere but I can't find it so I'm just going to stick some sticky stuff on it just to give it a little bit of grab and then it'll be fine. Right, so I've put some uh, that paste just around the, the bore there and then to get the actual bearing itself in, it's still a real tight fit, it's just, um, you know, it just needs something <laughs> and obviously the old bearing had something so we'll, we'll follow suit. Real light, tappy taps, don't worry. Right, on to the main job then. Let's try and clean these up a little bit. They're, they're pretty seized now. I've just had to go with a coilover spanner. And um, yeah, these cups are, are real stiff. I can't remember if I ever adjusted the height or not before. Now we should hopefully find that these threads in the body itself, they'll be nice and clean, hopefully. But we need to split these apart, so break away this lock. I might have to get a hammer and a chisel break that away and then yeah we're just gonna unthread it all and we're gonna use these to kind of clean we'll clean up the threads with some soft wire brushes and then we'll just run these up and down a couple of times with some grease and hopefully get everything nice and goodbye engineers leaving now but yeah hopefully we'll get everything nice and freed off and then when we do come to corner balance it in the future everything will be real nice failed spectacularly to get this free. Um, gave up after trying everything I could, all the different tools and all the different heats in the world. I didn't want to heat it up too much because obviously you know, it's a damper at the end of the day but the pipe grips on there that wasn't working and uh, tried all the different uh, what they call the C spanners for the coilovers as well just couldn't get a good enough grip to break this free. But I'm going to try again when I get down the bottom. I've just cleaned all these threads up with a soft brush had some good time on that, got them as clean as I could, there was still a bit of corrosion on, probably should have got a before picture but uh, they're looking a lot better. But I'm just going to run these down now and um, yeah this is just some anti seas but you know for alloy so I'll put that on, hopefully um, at least I'll be able to adjust the spring height <laughs> and then I'm going to have another go at trying to break this off down the bottom. Alright, all done then, ish. Uh, I didn't get that loose again, but did make an absolute mess of the collars, so 
I'm just going to leave it for now. I'm not going to even attempt the other side because, like I said, I've made a real mess of these. And my theory is if I did ever want to adjust the ride height in the car, because this would be locked at the bottom, I might have more of a chance with it being attached to the car. I might, it might be easier. I don't know. I'm just, I'm uh, not wanting to spend too much time trying to free that up when I don't actually need to adjust it just yet. But we've got all the grease in the world on at the top and the bottom of the spring as well. This feels real tight now and good. Um, real real solid I don't know why that would change but it, it definitely feels a bit more solid but yeah that's that's it done just a reminder of what they look like before obviously I still need to do this one but yeah I'll uh, get this finished off and then uh, get them back on the car so I'll get onto the other side now and then we'll put the car back together so this is the kind of corrosion that I'm left with after a good time scrubbing, cleaning. It's not perfect, but you know, they're quite old, so could be a lot worse. Right, so perhaps not as successful as we could have been, but you know, they're looking a lot better and hopefully won't make twangy noises when I'm turning uh, fastly, quickly. Fastly, that's not a word. Um, oh, fuck off. <laughs> Fucking spot the difference. Okay, so I've got something to do first. I've missed the fucking dust cover of this. Can you see the difference? Yep, so whoopsie. But yeah, I'm not gonna video myself putting it back together. I'll get this dust cover on, on this shocker, and then I'm just gonna send it back together. I've got new bolts for the pinch bolt, and I need to, well, I don't need to, but I'm just gonna run a tap down those threads as well, because they were a bit dirty. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna smash it all back together, and then, We'll go for a drive and then hopefully everything will be absolutely mint. But let's find out. This is still, of course, my favorite thing to do. Ignore the noise in the background, but I do love tapping. Now, I know I said I wouldn't do any video until it was back together, but the coil over back on, that's looking really good and, and nice, yep. Looks good, bro. Now I'm just putting the under trade and stuff back on. And if you watch the I kind of crashed my M3 video, you'll know that I kind of crashed my M3 and some of the damage is becoming a bit more apparent now that I'm trying to put things back together. So I've just noticed, see this bit of alloy here? I'm trying to put the under tray on and uh, that where it's a nice C, that should be pretty straight, bro. Look at that side. That side's got a kink to it, but yeah, it should be yeah, should be a lot straighter than that. That's uh, it's no good. So I'm gonna try and see if I can pull that straight a little bit, just try and get the under tray on because it's uh, it's not going on at all at the minute, which might explain why the bumper looked like it was pulled under a little bit because all this, it's it's kind of trying to pull itself in. So I'll straighten this out and hopefully when we put the bumper back on, it won't look so chinless. Right, that's it, pretty much back together. Now I just need to put the wheels on. So I thought I'd just kind of do a comparison of this shocker, because this is the one that I showed on video before. Spot the excellent repair, by the way. Duct tape and cable ties, fix all. So I can just get my head out of the light a little bit. So let's compare that to what we had last time. Mild corrosion, and <laughs> just, just, just mild corrosion. Yes, yeah, quite some difference. I mean, they look a lot cleaner, right? So uh, let's hope they perform. Hopefully, we've uh, we fucking nailed it. Hopefully, but let's get the wheels on. Let's go for a drive. Happy days. Fingers crossed. Happy days. Right. So I've done about five. 10 miles ish and it seems all right i can't make it do the knocking noise on the front i am hearing something on the back now so maybe we've got something else to look at but there seems to be something going on at the rear i've been parked up for five minutes just next to a field and i've got so many flies in the car as well so that's pretty crap and also my auto changer the, the cd auto changer has got stuck and um i can't get it to play any bluetooth so the cassette's stuck in the holder for some reason. 
So I've got no Bluetooth, which is a shame. One of the main reasons I wanted to drive it home in this today is because the iDrive's playing up again on the E61. But never mind, let's go for a drive. I think we might have fixed it, but let's see if we can make it make that noise. Well, a little conclusion then, as soon as it's, it's not exactly driving weather anymore. It was earlier, but it's, it's definitely not now. What's the conclusion then? Is it fixed? Well, I can't be sure. I can still feel something. I can still feel something. And I can hear things seem to be coming from behind me. Um, but yeah, I didn't feel anything for ages. And then I did feel some, I've only felt it once, it could just be something else now, it, you know, it's old car this now, it's nearly 20 years old this one, so, you know, we'll have to look at some other stuff, more than likely, but that work that we've done to free up the springs and a new bearing, you know, it was well overdue, you saw what the coilovers looked like when we started, you saw what they looked like when we'd finished, so, you know, it's hardly been a waste of time, has it, so, hopefully the video's been good enough to watch and uh, next video I will be drifting most likely in the rain if, if it's meant to be like this for a couple of days so I'll probably be drifting in the rain so look forward to that F finally driving that 500 wheel horsepower skyline so uh, yeah that could be interesting eh I'll see you there all right it's the day after yesterday I thought I'd give a quick little update I've done about another 100 miles or so, so I've done say 160 or something, yeah, just over 160, so I've got a decent feel for the car now, and I do believe I fixed the problem that I was trying to fix, which was the twanging when transitioning, I think that's fixed, but there are definitely other noises, both from the front and the back. Now the back, I'm pretty sure it's just the spring seat in, because the springs that I put in are slightly shorter than what they could be really, so I'll investigate that, but I think that's what's happening. I might be able to um, put a spring seat in or something to try and to try and stop that. Or it might just be that I've not put the spring seats in, it's just the noise of the spring moving at the back, which is causing the twang or the, the occasional noise. Now what I do think what I need to do is to have a good refresh on the front end on this, um, I don't really want to replace anything that's not broken, that's not me. I don't want to just go and replace the wishbones. I, don't, I just don't really want to just spend that money because that's going to be about £600 for a pair of decent wishbones. I don't really want to do that. But I think there are still things that I can I can do to try and sort it out. I, the first thing I need to do really is strip it down. And um, yeah, there's things like power steering lines and that that I need to change. Uh, I'm not going to the Nürburgring for two months, so I've got 
a bit of time there I guess but definitely need to start cracking so let's get the car back inside and jacked up uh, I'm not doing a video today I'm just going to be tidying up and getting ready for the drifting but there's definitely going to be some more work to do on the M3 in the future it's a lot better for sure the work on the coilovers definitely made a good improvement but it's definitely not ready to go back to the Nürburgring yet so the stuff to do more videos to come fixing the M3 working on the bloody thing and for a little bit of bonus content apparently we can fix this CD changer by tapping it and pressing the eject button according to a post I found on M3 cutters so let's try that so press eject now nothing happens but where would I tap? underneath? wondering what all the wiring is, this is for me to have Bluetooth in the car. And the Bluetooth side of things working, it's just this fucking thing stuck so it won't play a CD. Ah! Oh, fucking worked! So I've got some good, good quality CDs in there. Back album, Anthem's 80s. Oh, what's that one then? Well, if you can guess that one, you're in the good books. Let's see if the Bluetooth works. Bonus content, bonus content. About to listen to fucking Sunday morning love songs today. Absolute garbage. Yeah. Oh, Sunday. That wasn't my music. Oh. Yes, lads. Thanks to the guy on M3 cutters for saying hit it and hit the button at the same time. Yeah! Oh yeah, I fucking forgot to put the fucking dust cover on, man. It's seized anyway, isn't it? Fucking, it's not, it's only seized at the bottom. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> 